right on the edge of the Perfect. So right here, this is my first shot. And that was your first one? Second shot. Third shot. And that was your fourth. My, the barrel was cold on this first one. Oh, that's but why. But I did an adjustment on these. And I did one last adjustment and right here. And then Ryan shot the last one right here. So those are okay. The good thing is a deer's heart's much bigger than that circle. So tomorrow morning, let's get after it and get out of here. Yep. What makes somebody an actual hunter? Uh, would it be a window decal on the back of the truck? Uh, you think of a guy, let's say he's never been in the woods before, uh, he goes into the local hunting store, he picks out a nice big window decal, st sticks it on the back of his truck, and he drives around. Now everybody looks at that guy, he looks at the truck, sees the sticker, and they quickly identify and say, that guy's a hunter. The problem is he's never stepped foot in the woods before. So does that really make him a hunter? The answer is no. Uh, what makes somebody a hunter is uh, pursuing that wild animal when they're out in the field. Uh, today we want to talk about baptism. Uh, what's the purpose of baptism? Does baptism save you? Uh, we can see through the scriptures that baptism could never save us, but there's an extreme biblical importance in baptism. First we're going to get to the field from a youth hunt in 2017, and we're going to look at the scriptures and see what the Bible says about getting baptized. Well, before we could get the camera on, we had a, a nice buck cross the lane, uh, but we got this doe that just now popped out. Uh, we are not allowed to shoot does on this property, uh, but these deer are working our way up to an opening, and we're hoping Ryan can get a shot at this buck.
Matt! You got him. I shoot. No. Wait till he goes broadside. Wait. Wait till he goes broadside. Matt! So what does the Bible say about baptism? Uh, you know, when we look at the example of the hunter that uh, puts that window decal on the back of his vehicle, uh, he's never going to be a hunter unless he actually goes to the field. And what, that, what that sticker does, it just symbolizes what he enjoys to do. Um, baptism, that's exactly what that is, is a symbol. What makes us a hunter? Going to the field. What makes us saved? faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, when we looked at the last video, we talked about eternal security. We used Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Faith is believing. You see, grace is unmerited favor, and the only way to inherit eternal life is through faith, believing in Jesus Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. The Bible tells us in verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. Well, what is baptism? Bapti baptism is a work. It's something that you do for show. It's what other people see you do. But all through the scriptures, we can see the Bible shows us that confession in the heart is where our true salvation comes from. We have to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, today we see religions all over the world uh, sprinkling and just a little bit of water. Uh, that's, not, that's not biblical. Anytime we look at a passage of Scripture, we can see that baptism, they would go down into the water and they'd be totally submerged. Now what that is, it's a picture, it's a symbol of the death. You see, when, you, when you're, you're standing up, you're, you're dead. You're dead in sin. When you confess Jesus Christ to be your Savior, you're buried in your sin, just as Christ was buried in a grave. And when you accept Christ as your Savior, you're raised in a new life. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the symbol. That's the outward profession to show everyone, hey, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now let's take Jesus Christ for a minute on the cross of Calvary. There were two thieves that were hanging next to him. That one thief looked to Jesus Christ. He knew he was a thief. He knew he was a sinner. He knew that he was hanging there on that cross, dying for the sin that he had committed. And he identified that this man in, in the middle of him and the other thief was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And as he looks to Jesus, he says, remember me. Two words. We can see the Bible shows us that he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ at that, at that moment. Christ turns to the thief and he says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, an important thing to see in this thief's life is that he was going to die in just a few hours. Uh, at the end of the day, they took the bodies down off the crosses. And Christ had died and the and the thief had died that well. Both thieves had died. But according to the word of Jesus Christ, when that man died, he was going to be with him in paradise. You see, the thief never had time to be baptized. But yet today we look at religion and they say, baptism is a part of salvation. But when we do that, we begin to put baptism with works again. Hey, there's a scripture out there that, that people build their foundation on saying that baptism is part of the works of salvation. And that's found in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. The Bible says, And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see that word for. Now, the Bible tells us, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth. And we have to look at that word for in that passage of Scripture, in that verse. Now, Peter's saying, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. So that word for can mean one of two things. It means in order for. You get baptized in order for your sins to be remitted, in order for your sins to be forgiven. But that word for also means because. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, because the sins that were remitted. You see, our sins can be forgiven because of Jesus Christ, the death of the burial and the resurrection. 
It doesn't mean that we have to be baptized to get saved. It means that we get baptized because sins have been forgiven. That's a step of faith. We go back to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Just before Jesus ascended to heaven, He told His disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You see, Jesus Christ commanded us. It's important. When we get saved, our first step of obedience as a Christian is to be baptized. Total submersion in water, and it pictures the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What He did for us to pay for our sins. But you see, if baptism saved us, that means it would have not been a gift. It means that works is a part of salvation. And we know that's not the case. Uh, we can continue reading in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 8, uh, we see the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, he's reading the book of Isaiah. Uh, Philip uh, comes to him and, and he's, he can't understand the scriptures. And so Philip begins to preach to him. And as they come to this pool of water, the Ethiopian eunuch says, uh, Here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip says, If thou believest with all thine heart, and the Ethiopian Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You see, it was, he had to believe with all of his heart, the Bible tells us. And that Ethiopian eunuch confessed Jesus Christ to be his Savior. And the first step after being saved, the Bible says they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. It was a command of Christ. Hey, there's a lot of people today that get saved. They, they make that true confession of Jesus Christ, but they don't do that first step of obedience to be baptized. Baptism could never save you. If baptism saved you, hey, John 3.16 wouldn't, wouldn't be true. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We can look at Matthew chapter 7. The Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. John 6.40 shows us the will of the Father, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Look at the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see, salvation, it's a heart decision. It's believing in that work that Jesus Christ did for me and did for you on the cross of Calvary. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Baptism, it's the symbol. It's the window sticker on the back of the truck. It shows everybody, hey, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, and He saved me, and I want to make that publicly known. We get baptized because it was a command. Now that was Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, and Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We know that word for in Acts 2.38 means because sins that were remitted and not in order for your sins to be remitted. We get down to verse 41, Acts chapter 2, verse 41. The Bible says that Peter continued to preach unto them and give them understanding in the Scriptures. And it says, And they that gladly received His word were baptized. Baptism comes. It's that first step after salvation. Let me ask you today, have you ever been baptized? If you've never been saved, baptism's all in vain. It's for nothing at all. You must believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died for your sins. And the first step of obedience is to get into the water and to be baptized, to show that symbol, to show that picture, the work that Christ did in your own life. As we're making our way back to the truck, I could see a set of antlers bouncing up and down in the tall weeds, uh, bumping some doe around. Uh, we had two doe pop out right in front of us, maybe 20, 30 yards in the tall brush. But we got set up on the little field edge here. Uh, we did have a little excitement, but that buck just would not step out. He must have decided to go the other way.
Well, we didn't put anything on the ground, but we sure did have a lot of fun. Hey, we can see at a hunt like this that going to the field and pursuing after that wild animal is what makes us a hunter, not the sticker on the back of the truck. Hey, Jesus Christ is the only way for salvation. Putting your faith and trust in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. If you've never truly been saved, I'd invite you right now to get on our website, go to the Lost page, go visit some of our other hunts on our hunting page, and we'll give a presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our desire and our goal is to make sure first that you know Jesus Christ is your Savior and you're on your way to heaven. Uh, but after that, we want to help you grow and be strengthened in your walk for the Lord. Hey, I don't know, maybe you're not sure where to go to church, but you're looking for a, a good local church in your area. We'd sure be glad to help you. Send us an email. Uh, go to the Contact Us page on our website. Give us your information, general area of where you live, and uh, we'll get in touch with you and try to get you set up with a good local New Testament church to where you can build those important foundational things as you walk with Christ. Hey, thanks for watching Six Day Outdoor Ministry, and we'll catch you next time.